In our second video for lesson 10.6, we'll be exploring the limit comparison test, which states that if a sub n is greater than zero and b sub n is greater than zero, and the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n produces a finite positive number, then the series from n equals one to infinity of a sub n and the series from n equals one to infinity of b sub n either both converge or both diverge. So this is kind of a mouthful, but we're gonna be taking a look at it later through some examples. But first you might be wondering, how is this different from the direct comparison test, which we explored in that first video? The direct comparison test compares the size of two functions or two series, while the limit comparison test compares the behavior of the functions or the series. Let's take a look at the limit comparison test through an example. Determine the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals one to infinity of one over n cubed minus two n squared plus two n. The first thing we have to do is we need to identify what is a sub n and what is b sub n. a sub n is always going to be the function that we are given. We're gonna say that is a sub n, one over n cubed minus two n squared plus two n. b sub n is a function that is similar or we think is going to behave similarly to this one. So we're going to say, let b sub n be equal to, well, this one's pretty similar to one over n cubed. The n cubed is really what is gonna be influencing the magnitude of this in the long run. So we're going to say b sub n is equal to one over n cubed. We could also write that we are comparing this to one over n cubed. Okay, so now we need to set up this statement. So if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n produces a finite positive number, then we can conclude that this series and this series have the same behavior. So we're going to say limit as n approaches infinity, and we're gonna to have to do a big line here because, because we're gonna have our a sub n over b sub n. a sub n is one over n cubed minus two n squared plus two n, and our b sub n is one over n cubed. Now, how do we deal with this? Well, if we're dividing by one over n cubed, we can really just multiply by the reciprocal. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n cubed minus two n squared plus two n times n cubed over one. Then we can synthesize that down into one fraction. And at this point, we can find the limit. Now, since we have a degree of three in the numerator and our highest degree of three in the denominator, we're just going to take the leading coefficients here. So we're going to take one over one. So this limit is equal to one. One is a finite positive number. Therefore, we can say that the behavior of this series is going to be the same as the behavior of this series. We don't know the behavior of this series. We don't know whether this one converges or diverges, but we do know that this series is going to converge because it's a P series and P is equal to three, which is greater than one. So since this one converges, this one also converges. There's my response. The series converges by limit comparison with this series, which also converges by the p-series test. Determine the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals one to infinity of two over the square root of five n minus four. Again, we're going to be using the limit comparison test here. This one is similar in behavior to one over rad n. So we are comparing this one to the series from n equals one to infinity of one over rad n. Then we need to take the limit as n approaches infinity of our a sub n, which is this, over our b sub n, which is one over rad n. Now, in this case, instead of doing the big lines, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip straight to saying two over the square root of five n minus four, and then I'm going to think about what it would mean to be dividing by one over rad n. Dividing by one over rad n is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, or rad n over one. So I'm just going to go straight to saying times rad n over one. Clean this up a little bit and we have the limit as n approaches infinity of two rad n over rad five n minus four. Because this is a limit at infinity, we are going to kind of ignore the negative four because that's not going to do a lot in the long run. And we really just have two rad n over rad five times rad n. We can think about the rad n's canceling. Oops, and I should still have my limit notation on the front right here. And if we think about the rad n's canceling, we're just going to be left with two over rad five. Since that is a positive finite number, we can compare this series and this series. So what does this series do? Well, this series is going to diverge by the P series test because if we have one over n to the power of one half, one half is less than or equal to one. And when, and when our P value is less than or equal to one, we know that our series diverges. 
So now I'll write out my statement saying that this series diverges by limit comparison with this series. Something to note is that if you get something that is not a positive finite number, well, first of all, that means that you can't conclude that the behavior of these series are going to be the same. But second of all, it might mean that you compared it to the wrong thing. For instance, if I pick to compare this to the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, that would not work. I would not get a finite positive number here, so I would have to do something else instead. Determine the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 6n to the 4th plus 3n squared over n plus 4n to the 5th. When I set up my thing that I'm going to be comparing this to, I'm going to want to compare this to 1 over n, and I will show you why in just a moment. The reason why I'm wanting to compare this to the series of 1 over n is because if we look at the greatest power in the numerator, the 6n to the 4th, over the greatest power in the denominator, the 4n to the 5th, that's very, very similar in behavior if we have the function f of x is equal to n to the fourth over n to the fifth, kind of ignoring the coefficients for now, that is identical in behavior to 1 over n. So we're looking for functions that are going to be similar in behavior by only focusing on the things that affect the magnitude of the numerator and the denominator the most. So now that I have my thing that I'm comparing this series to, I need to find the limit as n approaches infinity of this, my a sub n, so 6n to the 4th plus 3n squared over n plus 4n to the 5th, divided by 1 over n, or I could do times n over 1, because dividing by 1 over n is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal n over 1. Then, still keeping my limit notation on the front, I'm going to distribute the n up here. I have 6n to the 5th plus 3n cubed, and that denominator stays the same. Now, at this point, when I'm focusing on my limit as n approaches infinity, I only care about the 6n to the 5th and the 4n to the 5th. And if I take the horizontal asymptote, that's going to be 6 fourths, which, which is a positive finite number. Because I wound up with a positive finite number when I took my limit, that means that I can compare the behavior of this series to this series. Now, I know that the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n is going to diverge, because that one is a p-series, or you could think of it as the harmonic series. So for my justification, I will write that this series diverges by limit comparison with this series. Let's try a multiple choice. Which of the following series diverge? We've got three series here. Now, first, I want to show you kind of the shortcut method, which is if you're crunched for time. It is not going to be 100% accurate, but most of the time, this is kind of good enough if you're on a multiple choice and you are crunched for time. So I'm going to take a look at what am I going to be comparing this to? Well, this is really n to the power of 1 over, and then I'm just going to ignore the plus n for now. I just have n cubed, and I have the square root of n cubed, or n to the power of 3 halves. So n to the power of 1 over n to the power of 3 halves is going to behave very, very similarly to 1 over rad n. Now, using the p-series test, this one is going to diverge. So I'm going to tentatively say this one diverges. How about this next one? What is this similar in behavior to? Well, we have 4n to the 5th over 3n cubed. That's similar in behavior to n squared, but that's not typically one of these ones that we would use the limit comparison test for. All we need to do here is use the nth term test. Limit as n approaches infinity of 4n to the 5th over 2n plus 3n cubed. And we know that an n to the fifth is going to grow faster than an n cubed, so that's going to be equal to infinity. Now, since this is not equal to zero, we know that by the nth term test, this second series also diverges. Now, for this third one, we're looking at the series from n equals 1 to infinity of n times e to the power of n over 4n to the fourth. This one is going to be similar in behavior to, if we cancel 1n from the top and the bottom, it's going to be similar in behavior to e to the power of n over n cubed. And then if we were to use the nth term test on this one, we would say limit as n approaches infinity of this, which is our new series, e to the power of n over n cubed. The e to the power of n is eventually going to be a faster grower or a bigger grower than this n to the power of 3. So we would get something that's approaching infinity, which is not equal to 0. So this one also diverges by the nth term test. So choice C is probably correct. 
However, the thing that we have to do to double check this, so again, if you're in a time crunch, you would just select C and move on. But we do want to double check here if we have enough time to make sure that we can actually compare this series to this and that we can actually compare this series to this by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of this over this and ensuring that we get a positive finite number. Is that step super, super important? Not if you're rushed for time, but it, it is important if we want to make sure that we are being accurate. So for this first one, let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of our a sub n, which is going to be n over rad n cubed plus n times the reciprocal of this, because we would want to divide by this, but we'll multiply the, by the reciprocal. So we have rad n over 1, and we're going to get n rad n over the square root of n cubed plus n. Now, in the long run, this plus n doesn't matter a whole lot. So we're just going to have a square root of n cubed, which is the same thing as an n rad n here. So this would be equal to 1. Because 1 is finite and positive, we can officially use the limit comparison test to compare the behavior of these two. Because this one diverges, this one also diverges. Now let's just double check our last one here. Because this one, we only had to use the nth term test. We did not use limit comparison at all. But let's double check with this one. So this was the thing that we were comparing it to. We were comparing it to the series from n equals 1 to infinity of e to the n over n cubed. So let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of this times the reciprocal of this. If we get a positive finite number, we, we will know that we are able to compare the behavior of these. Now I already see that I have an e to the n on the top and an e to the n on the bottom, so I'm going to cancel those. And then I have n to the fourth over 4n to the fourth take that limit and that's going to be one fourth, which is a positive finite number. So yes, we can compare the behavior of this series to this series. So choice C is the correct answer. Which of the following series can be used with the limit comparison test to determine whether the series from n equals one to infinity of two rad n over five n squared minus n plus one converges or diverges? In the long run, what's gonna be really important in the denominator here is the five n squared. That's gonna influence the magnitude. So I'm gonna kind of ignore those for now. Now, if I'm trying to come up with something that is going to have similar behavior, I look at the degrees. So I have a degree of one half here and a degree of two. I'm ignoring the coefficients for now. If I just have a rad n over n squared, that's going to be the same as one over n to the power of three halves or one over n rad n. So I think it's going to be choice D. However, I want to double check this by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n and making sure that I get a positive finite number. a sub n is going to be this original one. I have 2 rad n over 5 n squared minus n plus 1 divided by this is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So times n rad n over 1. Then I'll do a little bit of cleanup here. 2 rad n times n rad n is going to be 2 times n times another n, because that rad n times rad n will make another n. So I really have 2n squared up here. And that's over 5n squared minus n plus 1. Take the limit and you would get 2 fifths here. Since 2 fifths is a positive finite number, this was the correct choice. If you tried multiplying this by the reciprocal of any of these other ones, you would not get a positive finite number. And that means that you could not use the limit comparison test to compare the behavior of those two functions. Which of the following series can be used with the limit comparison test to determine whether the series from n equals 1 to infinity of n times 5 to the power of n over 3n squared plus 4n converges or diverges? So what we're looking for here is what's the series that we're comparing this to? Which one of these is similar in behavior to this? Well, if I have a single n up here and then I have an n squared down here, and remember the three n squared is what's most influencing my, the magnitude of my denominator, so that's what I'm gonna focus on. I would just have a five to the power of n over a single n as my simplified series that I'm going to compare it to. So I think I'll be comparing this to the series from n equals one to infinity of five to the power of n over n, which matches choice C. However, I want to double check this by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is this, divided by b sub n, this, and making sure that I get a finite positive number. That will guarantee to me that the behavior of this series and this series will be the same. So we have n times 5 to the power of n over 3n squared plus 4n. Dividing by this is the same thing as multiplying by n over 5 to the power of n. Now my 5 to the power of n on the bottom and the top is going to cancel. 
And then I'll clean this up so that I have the limit as n approaches infinity of n squared over 3n squared plus 4n. The 4n is inconsequential in the long term. We just have the 1n squared over 3n squared, which winds up being 1 third. Since that is a positive finite number, this is the correct series. Which of the following statements about the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals 1 to infinity of e to the power of n plus 4 over 3 to the power of n is true? The first one says that the series diverges by the nth term test. Let's take a look at that one by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. In this case, a sub n is going to be e to the power of n plus 4 over 3 to the power of n. So if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the power of n plus 4 over 3 to the power of n, the plus 4 is inconsequential in the long term. And then we have e to the power of n over 3 to the power of n. Since 3 is bigger than e, our denominator is going to be getting bigger. And if we have small number over big number, that's going to be getting closer and closer to 0. Now, we can only say that something diverges by the nth term test if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is not equal to 0. Therefore, choice A is not correct. However, we don't necessarily know that this one converges either. It could still diverge. The nth term test was inconclusive. So now we're saying that this one diverges by limit comparison with the series from n equals 1 to infinity of e to the power of n over 3 to the power of n. That looks promising because if we try to synthesize this down into its most important parts, we would take the e to the power of n and 3 to the power of n. And we can verify that this is the correct function to use limit comparison with by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of our a sub n, which is the e to the power of n plus 4 over 3 to the power of n, and multiplying it by the reciprocal of this, 3 to the power of n over e to the power of n. Now, if we get a finite positive number for this, that means that we can compare the behavior of this series and this series. We can say that they both converge or both diverge. The 3 to the power of n's will cancel and we'll be left with the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the power of n plus 4 over e to the power of n. This is eventually going to produce a 1. Since 1 is finite and positive, we will be able to use limit comparison here. However, we have to think about whether the series is going to diverge by limit comparison or converge by limit comparison. So let's take a look at the behavior of this series. This series is the same as the series from n equals 1 to infinity of e over 3 to the power of n. The absolute value of our r term in this case, which we're doing geometric series here because we have an a times r to the power of n, the absolute value of r is equal to the absolute value of e over 3. e is about 2.7. 2.7 over 3, that's going to be less than 1. When the absolute value of our r is less than 1, that means that, it, that the geometric series converges. So because this series converges, we also know that this series converges. And we can make that conclusion because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n is equal to a finite positive number. So it converges. Choice C would be correct.